Hey everyone, the Mouse the Gamer, and welcome back to Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot's The First Cases. In the last video, we completed Chapter 6, The Search, I believe. I believe that's right. Anyway, um... So, we just got done searching all the rooms, talking with everybody, and we figured out who the uh, blackmailer is. Now all that's left to, to do is to find out who the uh, murderer is. So, let's figure this out. My patience has grown thin. The guests are the s and the staff of this house think it is acceptable to lie to my face when questioned and obstruct my investigation. But no more. We shall see how Sterling and his staff fare under some pressure. I have been lied to for the last time. My suspicions initially led me to the guests, but now they are firmly placed on the staff. Sterling and Rihanna cannot hide behind their lies any longer. Well, those two are going to, uh, get a face full of parole here in a minute. Alright, let's see. Completed. Not completed. Not completed. Let's go talk. Okay. Where am I going to end up now? Hmm, it looks like Elizabeth is on her way to see me, but at such a late hour. Mademoiselle, what a pleasure to see you. Detective, I. What's wrong? It is a rather late hour to be wandering the halls. Oh, yes, of course. I do not feel myself, Detective. Okay. If that is the case, you should be resting. Uh, allow me to help. No, no, that's quite all right. I will see to my duties and return to bed. Peculiar. Lizzie, uh, excuse me, Elizabeth. Lady Van Den Bosch has been waiting for some time now. Oh, yes, sorry. Detective Poirot was just... I'll see to the detective. You just head on up. Off you go. He's trying to keep me away from Elizabeth. Good night, detective. Bonne nuit, mademoiselle. Elizabeth is certainly not herself. I thought the death of the Major had brought up uncomfortable memories of her beloved Luke, but it may be something else. I'm sorry about her, detective. As you can see, she is still not back to her usual bubbly self. This weekend seems to have taken quite a toll on her. She'll be right as rain in a couple of days. Now, what can I help you with? One, stop lying to me. Two, answer some more questions. As if by magic you appeared when needed. I would like to speak with you and the remaining staff. If you could gather them in the staff pantry. At this hour, detective, is that really necessary? Yes, it is. I shall be the one that determines what is and what is not necessary, and this is very much the former. As you wish, detective. I'll see if Inge has finished preparing for breakfast. And Mademoiselle Rihanna? Uh, yes, of course. I'll fetch her from the kitchen. Elizabeth may be some time with the lady of the house. Perhaps you'd like to start with us? Please. Very well. I shall speak with Mademoiselle Elizabeth when her duties are complete. While I am gathering the staff, Mr. Beckers is in the library. If you wish to join him, I could bring you both a nightcap. As long as you don't try and poison me. I wish to keep a clear head, but there is something I wish to discuss with Monsieur Beckers. This is my opportunity to confront Beckers about his dealings 
or lack there for of with the Silva without being disturbed. Alright, to the library. Anything new though? No, just says talk to Hugo. Where are you? There you are. Hugo? Monsieur Beckhaus, it is rather late. The other guests have already retired to their rooms. I didn't even see the time. It's easy to lose oneself in a library this impressive. Yes, it sure is. That is something we can agree on, monsieur. I suppose I should be heading. A moment, monsieur. There are some matters that we must discuss. Quite a few. Oh, what is it, detective? Uh, I did not realize your relationship with... Conrad was so business-oriented. I'm not sure what you mean. A proposal to make you somewhat of a star, a figurehead for the working man. What would you call that? There was certainly no talk of making me a star. That is not the type of man I am. She wanted to write a piece on my work with the Union. And I was happy to oblige. Bickers has always appeared to have the workers' intentions at the forefront of his decisions, but perhaps the thought of being remembered for something great was too much for him to pass up. Alright. I was wondering, did you did your speech go the way you expected? My speech? I'm not sure what speech. You may save your false ramblings for your next audience. I am aware you spoke with the Major yesterday. Yes, he speaks with all. Whoever told you that has it wrong, detective. Please, monsieur. The truth. Okay, fine. Yes, the Major and I spoke, but it was not for long. Okay. Uh, what was the manner of your conversation? From what I understand, it was not a light-hearted chat. I was trying to convince him to speak with Ernesto. It's time we brought the strikes to an end. And that was best approached by a shouting match? He wouldn't listen to what I said. I spent so long preparing how I was going to convince him, but men like him are only swayed by one thing. Money. Vickers is not wrong. Had he tried to grease the Major's palm, perhaps he would have been more successful. It is said that money is the root of all evil, but it can also be a rather powerful bargaining chip. Well, he was bargaining with people's lives. If he had acted sooner, None of those men, my men, would have to die. The Major oversaw security in the f factories. Could he have done more to stop the strike turning violent? Maybe. But it feels more like he was intending for them to go violent. A deal? It was an insult! And that is why you did not sign it? I didn't sign it because the workers deserve so much more. Not his pathetic attempts to get them back to work. Did you think there was a chance for a better deal to be made? I know there was. He's a pompous swine that cares for only himself and filling his pockets. I'm sure I have heard that description of De Silva before, or at least something similar. Alright, let's try this. Mademoiselle Conrad can be quite convincing, can she not? She has certainly taken several wealthy business partners by surprise with her knowledge and prowess. She knows how to use her womanly powers to get what she wants. Ah, but she has more than that. But she did not surprise or use you? Me? Use me? Don't be ridiculous, detective. There were no games played at my expense. Oh, but I'm sure there was. Nickers has quite a way with words, as a fan of his own voice. Perhaps I should allow him the opportunity to speak and open up without too much interruption in forcefulness. Even though she was able to convince you not to sign a deal, I'm sure many have been persuaded by her feminine prowess. 
Uh, let's go with this one. Perhaps some. But uh, I'm not I got so it wrong. easily manipulated or simple minded. I'll go with this one. And I stand by that. It was an insult. A rather bold move to make such a decision on your own. <laughs> All right. Are you prepared to take responsibility for your actions, or lack thereof? Honest. Your job is to support the workers, but nothing you have done has not has got them any closer to the results you promised. I may not be perfect, but I've done everything I can. Your efforts fell short in every respect. You claim to be the voice of the people, but you care about no one's voice or benefits but your own. It's not as easy as just signing a piece of paper, Detective. It is a heavy weight to bear on one's shoulders. I consulted with others. You yourself spoke of Mademoiselle Conrad's cunning in business. And I told you, I was not one of her targets. Tell me then, what was it she reminded you of? The acclaimed man of the people you would be known as if you pushed the factory owners for more? It wasn't like that at all. From where I am standing, it was she that was manipulating the terms of the deal, and you in the process. You were merely her pawn. Okay, yes, I know. I shouldn't have listened to her. But what else could I do? Remain an unknown my whole life? I didn't mean for anyone to get hurt. It may not have been your intention, but we both know the result. You rolled the dice with those men's lives for fame, and you lost. Pardon my intrusion, but you are far... You're, you're from a large family. What does that have to do with anything? Quite a lot, sometimes. I have often wondered about the competition siblings face in a large family. When you're young, it is the best feeling to know you have family that will stand by you, without even being asked. It is not until everyone starts carving their own path that you realize you're walking your solo, and those that were beside you are now miles away. My older brothers were the athletes of the family. They both played soccer, and were the infatuation of every teenage girl. I'm sure you have seen the type. Oui, monsieur. But I can assure you that was not I. Then there was me. Quiet, timid, a shadow of the Baker brothers. My voice and very presence was forgotten and ignored. Nothing I could say or do would ever reach the bar they had set. But I always knew I was destined for great things. Years passed and now that I no longer stood in the colossal ombre of my brothers, I could become my own man. When the position of union leader was posted, it was my chance to finally be heard. You hear politicians speak of the little or the common men? Well, that was me. And I knew what we wanted and what we needed. When I spoke, others listened. I held their gaze with a sense of pride, a sense that what I was doing was for the greater good. It was supposed to be my crowning achievement, lead the men to victory over the money-grabbing oppressors. But instead, all I did was lead them to their deaths. Monsieur, it was not at your hands that these men died. The blame cannot lie solely on your shoulders. Those responsible will be punished for their crimes. That you must trust. Baker's story is one of fighting to have one's voice heard. Be it a single or one of the masses, I'm afraid he may be remembered for what he did, but not in the way he so hoped. Alright. Anything new? No. Well, I got what I wanted out of that conversation, but not enough. Ah, there's the exit. Well, speaking with Beckers was not the reason for me being up at this hour. He was able to fill in some of the blanks regarding the Major, but not in getting any closer to discovering his killer. Perhaps the staff living quarters will... That should be downstairs. And 
over here. All right. Time to search. Huh. A decent supply of logs. I just hope the staff also get to make use of them with this weather. Newspaper. Hmm. They are a few days old and not, and do not hold a candle as to what has transpired here this weekend. I'm glad I'm a, hmm. a guest at the house. I'm not sure how well I would sleep in such a contraption. Actually, it makes me very comfortable. The cupboard. Nothing here. Luggage. Huh. A war medal that I assume must belong to the Major. Nothing there. Something here. Oh. Yep. There. Ah. A rather luxurious jacket. The initials read FH. Felix Hagen. Are these scruffy boots his as well? Why would they be left here, though? The items I have found are most intriguing and require an explanation that I believe only the staff can give. I shall meet them in the pantry. Detective, what can we do for you? You can help me by telling the truth, and in the process, help yourselves. Sorry, Detective. It's a bit late in the night for riddles. Riddles, my man? It is no riddle, monsieur. If I do not receive the truth, you shall all be charged as accessories to murder. Detective, I think maybe you have been locked in this house for too long. We have already... Uh -uh. You have told me a version, and now I require honesty. You... will not throw me off the scent. Alright, Major's coat... Worn out boots. You saw the major outside. Elizabeth is quite upset. Metal. Major's coat. Come, my little gray cells. Uh, let's try putting these two together. This will not get me any closer to my goal. Mm, okay, okay. Staff may be involved in the murder. Order and method. Alright. That... So... What else? I didn't think about those two down there. But I was thinking this could be a possibility. Some would say a lucky guess. I Major would not have left such a fine coat in the staff area. Someone must have worn it. More importantly, however, who wore the Major's clothes? And then we go down here and align these two. Things are beginning to become clear. The theory that the Major had been killed during dinner was nothing but a ruse. Why are the staff covering for the real time of death? Because maybe it had to do with the mistress. Madame Vandenbosch. Monsieur Sterling, is there anything you would like to add to your story? I'm not sure what you think I have done, Detective. Let us not string out this charade any longer. The telephone call the Major received. From his associate. I've already told you, Detective. I don't know who it was. Do not worry yourself on such details now. I suppose they were lucky to have called when they did. Otherwise, they may not have gotten through at all with the telephone lines being down as of yesterday. 
Hi, detective. Lucky, I guess. Sterling is no fool. I believe he is aware. I suspect him of something. Perhaps some careful worded questions are all that are needed for him to slip up. You were the last to see the Major alive when you brought him the bottle of whiskey in his study, correct? You explained why a metal... Yeah, I'll ask whiskey. him this one first. You took a bottle of whiskey to the Major? You spoke with Monsieur Demir en route? Aye, of course. It was a bottle he picked up from his last visit to Scotland. Rather smoky number from the Highlands. He was saving it for a worthy occasion. Drowning his sorrows must have been fitting enough. At first he does not remember a bottle at all, as if by magic he recalls the exact details. Or was it the one from the West Coast? You'll have to excuse my memory, Detective. It's not what it used to be. Alright. Uh, now tell me about the medal, if you can. Oh, you found it. Thank you, Detective. I've been looking everywhere for it. If I had lost a war medal, I would not stop until I found it. It's not what you think. I was... Exploiting a dead man's military achievements for your own personal gain? Nothing of the sort. He asked me to clean them up. I must have dropped it into my pocket when I was putting them back. An honest mistake. Never have I heard such a... Pathetic excuse to explain a stolen item in one's possession. I would expect a better lie from an infant. I wouldn't know. Probably. Your father was in the military for many years. That is what you told me. He was. And your family still keep his medals? They were sold. And why was that, monsieur? Is my family on trial now, detective? No, I'm just curious. Only you, monsieur. And I repeat my question. Because we needed money. Voila. Sterling was all aware of the medal's value when it when it found its way into his belongings. All right. So, next question. You claim the major asked you to clean his medals for display purposes? No. He keeps them safe with some of his old military documentation. Is that a typical job for the head butler? He trusts me to do a good job. I told him I used to clean my father's, so he asked me to do the same. And where does he keep these items? In the storage room. I know where everything is, so it's just easier if I fetch them for him as and when he needs them. Do not recall seeing any military memorabilia or keepsakes when I was in the storage room. Could there be another storage room he speaks of? Yes, the secret room. Are you happy here at the Vandenbosch house? It's certainly better than my last. You are paid a fitting wage for the work that is asked of you? I'm sure the lady of the house would not want me discussing it. But I... I should not complain. That is not the most convincing answer, monsieur. Between you and I, we all work very hard here. And it would be nice if we were rewarded for it. It seems Sterling is trying to convince me, as he has himself, that his light-fingered actions are justifiable due to the pity petite wage he receives for his honest work. Please don't go anywhere. If I require more information, I shall call on you again. Alright. Uh, let's see. New information. We have... Madam pays the staff very well. Very little. Archibald stole from the Major. Archibald forgot... He took whiskey to the Major. Archibald claims he lost the medals. Let's connect these two. I must take a different approach if I am to uncover... Alright. Archibald hasn't noticed the lack of calls. 
That was kept in the storage room. Staff may be involved. Uh, let's try and put these two together. I cannot see the logic in this. Well, it was worth a try. Uh... These two? Is there something I am? Eh, that was close. I was thinking about putting those two. I just wasn't doing it yet. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I should have known at first glance these belong to a member of the staff, but who? Uh, let's try these two. Another success. I never... Staff member dressed in the Major's clothes and took his possessions out in the snow for the guests to see. Why would they do this? Why indeed? Inga? Mademoiselle, I shall keep my questions brief. I don't know what else I can tell you. You have been honest with me so far. All I request is that you continue to do so. Oui, detective. I'm ar already aware of Inga's involvement with the blackmail, but I am not sure if she is also connected to the Major's murder. All right, tell me what happened before you found the Major in the study. It was frantic in the pantry. We were working hard to make sure everything was up to scratch. Go on. Then Liz burst in, asking for Maman Ray's help. Her help with what, exactly? I don't know. She took Liz to one side, and I was needed in the salon. We spoke just after that in the pantry. You did not question what she needed help with? I was too busy. I love Liz, but she sheds a tear at almost everything these days. Although, I have never seen her look so pale. Elizabeth still looked pale when I saw her earlier. I understand the amount of work that goes into keeping a house of this size running, but Madam cannot expect the staff to work if they are ill. Perhaps Rihanna can clear up the reason for Elizabeth's panic. Merci. I shall return if I have any further questions. Let's see, any clues? No, no clues. Mademoiselle, I shall be as quick and precise with my questioning as possible. Okay. What do you need? Um, my condolences on your brother's passing. Merci. He was a good man, taken too early. Forgive me, Mademoiselle, for not extending them earlier, but I was not aware of your relationship. He was my only brother, and he died doing what he believed was right. If I ever get my hands on who took him from me. I understand why she is so angry for her brother to be taken from this world at such a young age and in such a violent manner. Violence cannot be met with violence, but I am not sure Rihanna feels the same. True. Uh, tell me about your brother's involvement in the riots. You say the riots, but it was the strike he was part of. They started the riots, not the workers. By they, you are referring to the security forces. They were brought in to keep the peace. Security, huh? They were brought in to make an example of them. It was all peaceful until they arrived. Okay. Why would they need to make an example? so that the workers would stop rallying. No one is going to go on strike if they think they'll get killed. The security you talk of were armed and ready. The workers were pigs to the slaughter. What chance did they have? True. Is it obvious? Rihanna is still upset about her brother's death and 
rightly so. The events were as Rihanna describes. I cannot comprehend how the security forces were able to get away with such despicable acts of violence. Yes. This was before or after Archibald took him a bottle of whiskey. Before? You are sure? It may have been after. The whiskey is kept in the cellar with all the alcohol. It is. Do you happen to have a key to that cellar? Then you must have noticed him going into the cellar and returning with a bottle through the pantry, no? Yes, I suppose I did. It must have been before then. Uh -huh. It took only one question for Rihanna to doubt her own story. What I still cannot see is why the need for the lies. All right, tell me about Elizabeth now. What is there to say? Being locked away in the pantry, I don't see her for most of the day. Well, that may be, but she came looking for your help before dinner was served, did she not? She wasn't feeling well, that's all. If you say so. And she came to you. I told you, we are a family here. The girls come to Mama Reh if they have a problem, and I fix it. When I saw her earlier, I must admit she was not looking herself. Perhaps I should check on her. No! Just leave the poor girl. She'll be fine after another bowl of my homemade soup. She just needs her rest. I'm sure Rihanna is a loving mother figure to the staff while away from the, their families, but her eagerness to keep me from seeing Elizabeth again does not sit comfortably. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Alright. So, let's see. Rihanna believes workers don't stand a chance. Staff covering for the real time of death. Rihanna unsure about timing uh, let's try these two I should not be surprised by my own how can either of them forget something so important from only the day before alright Archibald and Rihanna unsure of their stories. Staff, uh, the staff members impersonate the major. Uh, let's try this. I must act on thought and. F no. Uh. Maybe these two. I cannot see the logic in this. All right, all right. In that case, how about this one and this one? What a revelation! Both Archibald and Rihanna played the parts very well. That is, until they became complacent. Why do the staff feel they need to fabricate stories? Uh, let's try these two together. Is there something? No. Then maybe this one? And this one? Magnifique. Hmm, I wasn't expecting that to actually work. I almost had to re relay their stories back to them both. I obviously cannot trust a word they have said. Why are the staff hiding the truth from me? Uh, staff are hiding the truth. Staff are involved with murder. Magnifique. It is a re revelation I had not expected. The staff were involved in the murder.
Well, young Inga is guilty of her own crimes associated with the blackmail. It is Sterling and Rihanna that have been in an integral part in covering up and obscuring the truth of how the Major was killed. Wait... Don't tell me it was Elizabeth. The staff were already suspicious to begin with, but this confirms their involvement. Are they... are all the staff members involved? Oh, I got three to work with now. I'm close to revealing the truth about the Major's murder, but I must understand the roles that each and every person involved played before the final puzzle is solved. Oh boy. Uh, Inga feels disconnected from her parents. Yeah. Rihanna helps Elizabeth after coming downstairs. Elizabeth looks white coming downstairs. Let's put these two together. This will not get me any closer to my goal. Uh. Hmm. Okay. A staff member impersonated. Uh, da -da. staff members are involved in murder. Well, let's try these two. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Well, it was either one or the other connecting these two. Can I imagine the pain they have felt losing Luke? His memory will live on in their hearts. Alright, I can't use that one right now. So... Uh... Don't know if this is gonna work, but... What a revelation! It actually did. Wow. I'm confident In Inga isn't part of the cover-up, but has clearly been a focus for the other staff. Alright, uh... These two? Come, my no. Gray cells. Then maybe these two. Order and method. That... Uh, these two. I must act on thought and fact. Oh, those two. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. All right. Elizabeth looked pale, and the other members of the staff were busy with their duties. We must. F she must have found the body, but did she play a part in the murder? Uh, connect these two. I must take a different approach, if I now. Then we connect these two. Come, my little gray cells. We must think logically. Okay. Wait. These two. Is there something I... I was gonna do that, but then I said not to. Things are beginning to become clearer. Although her duties are primarily focused in the kitchen and pantry, I don't recall seeing her. Alright, so let's connect these. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Personating the Major was Rihanna's role in the plan. Why it was necessary, I am not sure of yet. Why did she feel the need to cover for Elizabeth? And 
maybe these two? Order and method. No. That. Maybe this one to this one? Another success. I never doubted my. Uh, Archibald's acting skills came into play to cover for a member of the staff, but who? Brianna covering for Elizabeth. Archibald was covering for a staff member. Let's put these two together. I cannot see the logic in this. No? I thought that made perfect sense. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. This the stage phone call was Archibald's assignment. He went to great lengths to, pr to protect Elizabeth, but why did he feel the need to cover for Elizabeth? Well, young Inga is guilty of her own crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm missing something here. I don't know what. I now have all the pieces of the puzzle. I just must return to my room and place them together until the result re reveals itself. It is time for my little gray cells to go to work. I am so close to uncovering the truth. Alright, Perot, Let's get this over with. One connection. One. Okay. Uh, staff are involved in the murder. Let's try putting these two together. Things are beginning to become clearer. How could I have allowed this to slip through my grasp? Elizabeth is the murderer. Really? Are they? Or maybe they saw who murdered. I cannot believe I did not see it. Blinded by my own trust. When I look back now, the clues were there, staring me in the face. I spent my time chasing connections between the guests. Their motives and agendas were more than enough to raise suspicion. But while distracted by them, I failed to notice the one absent member of the household. What I still cannot grasp it is why. I promised myself that after that fateful day in the capital, I would not let my judgment steer me adrift. But once again, it is I that is left looking the fool. There is nothing more that can be done tonight. I must at least try to rest my head in preparation for confronting Elizabeth in the morning. And with that, I'm going to leave it here for now, and we'll pick this up in the next chapter, The Truth. Until then, see you guys.